On today's episode of On.net, Todd from the TrackJS project is going to be talking about his experience unfiltered about using .NET Core. Let's see what he has to say. Welcome to another episode of the On.net show. Today we're doing uh, part two with Todd. Uh, last time we talked about how he deployed um, uh, ASP.NET Core apps on Linux. And uh, now we're going to talk about uh, his experience of using .NET Core and you know whether that was a good idea. Uh, thanks again for being on the show, Todd. Thanks so much for keeping me around. Yeah. So let's let's just like dive straight into it. Um, you know, I guess like you know, any regrets? Like, I guess yeah. Let's see, let's see. What what do we want to cover? It should be, um, what did you like about using .NET Core, doing a real project on it? What surprised you in a positive way? What surprised you in a negative way? And what what are the things you that it's like? I really want this changed. <laughs> all right, all right. Tell us the things. I can I can do those things. All right. So what was surprising or let, let's put the headline up first. Do I have any regrets? No. I think .NET Core worked great for us. It was um, it was a good move for us. Uh, I have no 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 regrets, no problems uh, with the overall decision. There was no other alternative out there available to us that would have fit our needs quite as as well. Uh, things that worked particularly surprisingly well for us was around packaging, uh, which is what we talked about in the last episode. Um, the ability to take our .NET Core application and package it down to a single file and not need to worry about deploying a framework uh, to our servers or getting the runtime up and going, just having a file and putting it there was, oh, it was so it was so refreshing and nice to not need to worry about this on on both sides of the deployment. Uh, maybe some of the things that were a little frustrating is the overall ASP.NET Core kind of stack seems very married to the idea of dependency uh, injection. Uh, and everything is, is based on the idea that you, you're absolutely going to be running one of these in, uh, DI containers, and you're absolutely going to want to inject all of these things with middleware. And I, frankly, don't want to do any of that. Uh, we tend to keep our, our ASP stack like really thin and try not to do a bunch of stuff in that layer. We try and do as much as we can in our uh, in our lower layers and, and don't want to do a whole lot of mixing. Um, we have a lot of just static classes that you know talk to each other in very simple ways. And um, by having that really simple architecture, um, the dependency injection ideas kind of get in the way. And we end up like, kind of roundhousing around how ASP.NET wants to work with middleware. I really love the concept of middleware taken from you know, Node.js and Express, but we don't use any of it in .NET Core because it seems to be forced down the idea of dependency injection to make any of it work. OK, uh, th those all seem make sense. Um... I guess that that was like your your absolute favorite and your kind of your your least favorite. How about a few things in the middle? Um, a few things in the middle. Um, Link continues to be amazing. Every time I leave, you know, .NET development uh, for JavaScript and then come back, and it's just it's so amazing the 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 tool chain. Um, it's so good that I I'm. I don't know why it's not a default using in the classes anymore. Like when you create a class, it used to just be like you're yeah. using link. Of course you're using link. Why wouldn't you use link? And now I'll like just start typing something. It's like, I don't know what map means. I don't know what where means. I'm like, oh, using link. It's like, what? I don't know why it's not just there by default anymore. That's right. both so you're the, that's, that's you're both the president really good of the fan club. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the president of the fan club, but like, I definitely love Link a whole lot. Um, maybe on some slightly annoyance side, there does seem to be a bunch of um, <laughs> my partner on TrackJS calls it cheese moving. Like things got seem to have been rearranged in MVC, where like 
they're all still there. They all still do what they used to do, but they're all in slightly different places, like how how route values work and how uh, temp data works and like just just a bunch of things that moved around slightly. And it's just a little irritating that it moved without necessarily a solid change in behavior. Yeah. Yeah, just to be super clear, I'm not here to to defend a any of this. Um, I just I just want to provide one tiny piece of information there that you may yeah. or may not know, which is um, uh, in some cases there was needed to be some cheese moving to break dependencies. So in some cases, like you had uh, you know a particular property exposed in a place, but it was exposed too low. So as a result, it like caused this whole dependency chain to exist. And if you moved it to a different place, then you didn't have that problem. And so what it enabled is for people that were using just low level APIs, then they didn't need to bring high level APIs with them. And like, you know, I, I saw you obviously you're using self-contained and trimming. Well, that that helps a lot for that scenario is um, just breaking API dependencies. So that's one that when ASP.NETCore and also .NETCore was, was first introduced, that was at least one of the, the design considerations mm. at play. So just FYI, that doesn't that, change any of your feedback to be like- That, 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 make, that makes a lot of sense and I, I totally get it. Um, I'm only ex just sharing that like that was a point of friction, like totally. go it, going from old .NET into the new one, like we'd be off and running and like, you'd get 80% of the way there just like going from muscle memory and like, here's just how it works and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden it's like, that that object isn't there anymore. Or it's just, <laughs> it, what, where is it? How do I get it? I yep. used to be able to access this thing and now I can't access this thing anymore. How do I get access to this thing? Yep. Um, and that's just a point of frustration, but an understandable one if it needed to move for other reasons. Right, so that all makes sense. So. Um... One of the things that people talk a lot about, certainly our team talks a lot about, but we also hear it um, from users, is performance is better with um, the, the .NET Core, ASP.NET Core um, versions than .NET Framework. Have you seen that? Um, I confess that we have not done extensive performance testing on that. Uh, like I didn't like, the we've performance tested request metrics and what the project that we're using this on and it is blazingly fast and i have no concerns with performance at all but i confess i did not do like a head-to-head -head comparison okay. of if we'd written it on both sides okay just just a question makes sense uh but yeah right right but no cause for concern on the performance side no not none at all none at all yeah um yeah, another thing I'll share with you is, um, which I think is super related to the work you're doing, is we have a, an epic that we're working on around P95 latency, which is presumably up your alley. It absolutely uh, is. Yeah, so um, that'll be something. It'll be it'll be interesting to see once people start adopting 5.0, if you can see some improvements in you know P95, P99 mm. latency, because we're working on it. And what are you seeing are the causes of those P95 latency? Uh, it's it's little things or little or big things across the whole product. I mean, it's GC runtime libraries. It's it's basically the l most low level parts of our product that um, where there's like lock contention um, or yeah, those kinds of things. People who just hit it at the worst possible time in the worst possible way and. Yeah, and it's the sort of thing where it's difficult for a user to rewrite their code to avoid some of these things. So if we can just change them, then it just removes the whole conversation. For sure. Okay, well, I think maybe maybe this was pretty good. I, I really just wanted to get your feedback on kind of the highs and lows from your perspective, obviously. Yeah, cool. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks for, you know, uh, taking the time out just to do another quick video to give your feedback on the product. I think people really appreciate the, you know, genuine, sincere viewpoint and, you know, unfiltered. Before we did this, I, I told you, <laughs> no filters, right? Yeah, no filters, no infomercials. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, so that was good. One okay. of the one of the Go videos uh, that that 
it'd be useful, uh, might be illustrative, is uh, one of the videos on building request metrics, which is the video channel that we created uh, talking about all the steps that we've gone through in building the request metrics products. One of the videos is a short that, uh, that my, uh, one of my team members did all about parsing query strings. And it was a, like a detailed, like an in-depth look and how it used to be and how it is now and why how it is now is not good anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that might be a, a, good, uh, a good pointer of like maybe one of the pieces of friction that I didn't personally experience with it because he worked on that bit, but uh, some frustration that he had with the new way of doing things. Yeah, we could totally link to that. Okay. Thanks for thanks for taking the time. This was awesome. Thank you. Okay, this has been another episode on .NET. This has kind of been more of a product feedback session, which we I don't think have done before. So this is a, a nice change. Okay, thanks for watching.